Imagine this, your son, street lump lamoose, classy boy, he turns five, starts going to preschool, the fizzer day, his teacher is doing roll call and gets to his name, she looks up, creases her brow and reads again, sure that she made a mistake, street lamp, she says, her brow still furrowed, looking around at the collection of eager kids cross-legged at her feet, enter Mr. Street Lamp, is he wearing a Sesame Street shirt, no, he's wearing a shirt, tie too, he looks at the teacher and says yes miss, classy, the whole class is looking at him now admiring his fashion sense, his awesome name, his doubly good name, the rest of them, their name is only good for a girl or a boy, but for both, this kid surely must be a god, oh my, Mr. Street Lamp, the teacher will say, you sure have a unique name, I'm a unique guy, he'll reply, turning to the cutie decked out in her floral dress next to him and shooting her a wink, fade to black, third grade, Street Lamp starts making ripples through his primary school, people have a problem, Street Lamp will sort them, lost a ball, Street Lamp has got your back, skip rope gone missing, Street Lamp got you, He's earning the admiration and respect of those in the years above him, and soon enough, he's becoming this local legend, Street Lamp, the man that gets things done. His unique, amazing name has pushed him to be a unique, amazing gentleman, kind-hearted, check, brave, check, athletic, check, intelligent, you betcha, his reputation precedes him. The kids graduating that year are going to go to their middle schools, and the legend of Street Lamp Lamoose will spread further. The kid that's unstoppable, the classy motherfucker that does what's right, and does it well. 7th grade. Time to start middle school. Hormones start to kick in. By now, there are some overdeveloped dickish guys teasing him. You know what Street Lamp does. He doesn't fight back. He doesn't wage warfare against them. He just grins. Every night he runs. Every night he works out. His muscles are starting to develop. His facial structure. Impeccable. He's beautiful. The bullies aren't caring though. They're just continuously ripping into him, day after day. So what do you do when you're pushed? Repeatedly. Snap. Not Street Lamp. Street Lamp waits until they're separated from one another approaching and befriending each one on their own. Gets to know them, finds out that the bigger one, George, he's secretly in love with this girl and been trying to rip on Street Lamp because he's a baller and the girls love him, trying to prove that he's more attractive by bullying him. So Street Lamp, the good guy that he is, goes and approaches the girls, starts talking George up, telling her what a great guy he is really. Soon enough, they're going on a date, the kind of cheesy date that 7th graders go on, that trip to the movies where they gingerly hold hands halfway into the movie and she blushes and his breath increases in pace, nerves racing, heart pumping with such ferocity. Fast forward, Street Lamp the freshman. Freshman, his rep has spread through the high school already. You remember that cute girl in the floral from preschool? Yeah, she goes to the same one. She's developed pretty well, looking beautiful. First day of class, the teacher's doing roll call. She looks at the list, furrows her brow, looking up. She lowers her head, reading again. Street Lamp, Lamoose, she says. He looks up from the discussion he's having with one of the buddies that he'd made through George, talking about cologne or something like that, yes miss, he says. He looks around, catching the eye of Floral Girl, winking at her once again. She giggles, blushing. They start dating a few weeks later, her name's Abigail, it's a good relationship. He treats her well, not needy, not clingy, but just enough attention for her to feel loved, for her to spread the rumor that he's an amazing boyfriend, and an amazing guy. Junior year, Street Lamp and Abigail have broken up, it was mutual. It wasn't because there were problems in the relationship, Floral Girl just started thinking that they should see other people, she didn't feel like she was good enough for him. He always treated her so well, and she'd never dated a guy before. It was feeling too serious, and she didn't want to get serious so soon. Street Lamp. He didn't mind, he made sure they remained friends, they still eat lunch together most days, take the same classes and talk a lot. He started playing football, quarterback. Coach is saying that his AP Calc and Physics classes are really helping him with his arch, and his AP classes in ancient history have made him a master strategist. Nobody quite knows how he does it. Eight AP classes in junior year while being the quarterback of the number 7 ranked team in the country. He practices incessantly, studies even more. It should take its toll on his health, but it doesn't. He stays on top of it all. By now, the whole school knows who he is, and there's a non-stop stream of sophomores and juniors approaching him in the hallway asking if he wants to come to this or that party. He's the sweetheart of the school, and the sort of boy that every girl in the school fantasizes about. George, linebacker on the team, best buddies by now, him and the girl dated for a while but it's well and truly over now. Enter Friday night, house party in the suburbs. Street Lamp rocks up with buddies late, 10 or 11 at night. Everyone is well and truly drunk. A huge cheer erupts when they walk in. He's handed a beer as soon as he enters. He offers it to George. He doesn't drink. His mind is his best instrument. He doesn't want to damage it. Seniors hanging by the staircase. She's wearing an olive miniskirt and one of those ripped tees. Her hard body, tightly encased. Hi, street lamp, she says. Well, hi there. You want to come upstairs with me? Fade to black. Senior year. Street Lump and Abigail have drifted apart. He's dating the tight body. She's 18 months older, going to college nearby. He thought there might be some issue due to her being college, him senior year, 
but no such issue. He was a local hero by now. The football team was speculated to be number one in the country this year with him as the QB. Schools all over the country were scouting him. People latched onto her to be friends by association. She filters all the ones that aren't good people. She's good like that. He's studying pretty hard and training too. It's a big year for him. He spends half his time at the college taking classes. The other half is at the school. A few classes being taken but the majority spent devising new plays for the football team. He's turned into a natural-born leader. He goes out to one of the girlfriend's college parties. While he's there, he gets introduced to this girl, Amber. Now, Amber isn't what he's used to. The girls that surround him are the typical preppy forever 21 shopping silicon clones of one another. Amber though, she was witty, dry, ironic and twisted. They become friends. No romantic inclinations. The girlfriend gets worried. Streetlump tells her not to. Streetlump only has loving enough for one girl, and that's her. Few weeks later, Ember and Streetlamp are becoming pretty tight. Ember reveals she's a lesbian. Streetlamp, being the classy good guy that he is, doesn't care. Instead, he puts some feelers out and finds a few girls around her age that he thinks she'll like. He sets up a few blind dates. The first one didn't go so well. The second, it seemed to go great, but Ember wasn't a fan. She's getting pretty distant with him. He asks her what's up. She reveals she actually is in love with Tight Body. Dilemma. Streetlamp Lamus, being deserving of the good guy name. Sets up the threesome. Ember gets to live out her desires. Tai Buddy gets to experience the typical lesbian phase in college, and he sits back. The news of his sexual prowess spreads. Tai Buddy ends up falling for Ember, and they start dating. Streetlamp Lamus, angry. Nope. He's happy for them. He's proud. Graduation. Valedictorian, number one football team in the country, accepted a place at Stanford doing pre law. He gives his speech and talks about his life, how he's been empowered, and how he's lucky to have such a loving and caring family, how his dad is his hero. He starts crying. He doesn't hide it. He keeps his chin up and lets the tears roll down his face as he tells them about all that his mother and father gave up for him, how they taught him to be the person that he is today. A lot of people are crying along with him. After the ceremony, the principal shakes his hand, telling him that it's the finest speech that he has ever heard. He throws a party that night. He asks his mother and father to stay home and celebrate with him. He's still not drinking, but he lets everyone around him drink. Nobody gets too wasted out of mutual respect for him. The doorbell rings. One of his buddies starts to get up to answer it. No, dude, relax, have a good time, Streetlump says. He opens the door and who's there? Floral. His voice catches in his throat. He stammers for a second. H. Hi. He manages to spit out. He's never been tongue-tied around a girl before. She's got long auburn hair now. It goes past her shoulders. And she's wearing a floral print dress. Second year of college. Starting QB of the Stanford Cardinal. He's sharp-witted in his law classes. Topping the YAR group. He's been asked by his professors to help tang some of the first-year classes. They're pretty boring. He didn't really enjoy them the first time around, but Streetlamp has never been one to turn down an opportunity. First day as a TA, introduction to corporate law. He turns up about 20 minutes early and takes a seat in the third row back. He's always wanted to pull the cliched talk to student, make comments about the lecturer, walk up and become lecturer move. He sits down next to a girl, crop brunette hair spiked up at the back, a biker jacket on. Well, you're a rare sight in a class like this, he says, turning to her. She turns to him, grinning, street lamp. Abigail, I hardly recognized you. She left. It's been an interesting year. I can tell. A middle-aged man walked in, heading down the stairs towards the front of the stage. You're taking first-year law, she asked. Something like that. The man took the podium, scanning the students. Ah, uh, street lamp, just who I wanted to see. Get on up here, he says, the attention of the whole lecture theater suddenly on him. That year, they win the BCS. Third year, last year of pre-law. Abigail and Streetlamp start dating. The coach of the Cardinals didn't like it to begin with. There was a lot of conflict. He thought that she was bad for him, that she was dangerous. The crop spiky hair and leather she always wore, even in the dead of summer didn't help Streetlamp's case. It was a Tuesday night that the sparks truly flew. Streetlamp was sitting in coach's office, a combination of mahogany and red lush carpet. Coach had been given a raise after the BCS championship. It isn't acceptable, street lamp. I can't have my star athlete going around dating somebody like that. It isn't just about you anymore. It's about your career. It's about the public perception. It's about our fans and the teams that are scouting you, that want you. Is it really worth risking all of that for? He paused, a look of disgust on his face. Her, quite frankly, coach, he said, staring him straight in the eyes. I couldn't care less. I try to always do what's right and to always be honest. And that's what I'm going to do now. Abigail is the girl that I care about, that I love, her appearance be damned. She is the single most kind, caring, intelligent and brilliant girl that I have ever met. And if you were to ask me to give up either her or football, well, I'd have to have a long think about that. Boy, I've been where you are before. I've cared for. Goddamn, I've loved girls with more of me than I care to admit. But this is your future. This is the rest of your life. She isn't the type that you marry. She's the type that you fuck for a few years. 
spend your fortune on and then leaves you for your best buddy. He inhaled, tearing up a little bit. I just don't want to see you hurt by her street lamp. I understand, coach, but you have to understand me. I've known her for most of my life. I've trusted her with all that I am, and she hasn't betrayed me. Sure, we have rough patches, we drift apart sometimes, but we always come back. We always come back. Football is one thing, coach, but a life without the girl that I love, that's something completely different. They sat in silence for a little while. Streetlump's voice croaked as he started to speak again. If you're asking me to choose between football and the love of my life, you know the answer. That season, they went undefeated again with Streetlump starting every single game. Lamp